Hello and welcome. We're going to do a little auto turret video. I want to show you guys how to hook them up and just talk to you about some basics about auto turrets. A few people requested this in the comments. I figured I'd do it. I've actually been really reluctant to make this video because I don't want people to be hooking up turrets when I raid them. I would, uh, I would rather be the one with all the knowledge. Anyway, that's a little selfish, I know, but I guess it's time to share with you guys so you guys don't get raided so easy. Here's how you hook up turrets. How's, here's how you optimize the power. That's what's going to be. I'm also going to show you a few turret pods I like to use and just a few quick theoretical things here. So um, basically what I'm going to do here in this recording is just pause, set them, some things up, and then explain it. But uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about powering first because I think that's the most interesting or the most uh the biggest gap in knowledge is usually in how to power these so let's talk about that i'm gonna set some things up and i'll be right back okay this part's gonna look a little grindy in the video but i think it's important to show so usually if you're powering a bunch of turrets you want a large battery you can get away with a medium battery to some extent too um, but it only outputs 50 power so keep that in mind when you're thinking about the numbers a large battery outputs 100 uh, the reason you want a battery instead of directly hooking it to say a windmill is to have a buffer in case something goes wrong if the windmill goes down or something or the power also fluctuates with the windmill so uh, i like to place bat uh, large batteries like this in a triangle which allows for a little extra leeway uh you might be surprised i'm not i'll talk about it a little bit but small batteries are actually really really good now so um just know that that's kind of a thing and a lot of people do windows like this which is kind of fine and you can still get to these small batteries to wire them up too by jumping in the window um, but also i think a garage door is a fine meta too um, so you get to get to decide there but keep in mind the supplementing with small batteries this is one two three that's four additional turrets that you could support uh assuming you have like two proper face and solar panels each. All right, but let's hook this up. Let's get a little power for this thing. So how do you want to hook up your windmills? I see a lot of people not understanding this for some reason too. Um, and you you basically just want to get it up in the air four or five or six, uh, as, as high as you can get. So apparently from what I understand with these windmills is the, the, the power windmill, I'm saying that wrong, the power it generates determines how many blocks is it off it is off the ground. The terrain hill and stuff like that doesn't matter. But basically what you want to do is you find a square or a triangle you can build up off of and go like so. You don't need ladders, you don't need nets, you just need a bunch of wood. So if you see someone doing ladders and nets, realize that it's not really necessary. Oops, I'm gonna and fly back up here but i want to do this el natural for sake of example so you do this sort of thing you jump up you do it again and you just keep going up you should be able to get a frame on that one this is the triangle way if you're doing it with triangles you'll you'll be jumping up like this now keep in mind if you're not great at making these jumps which i'm not the best in the world you can still redo it and get practice at these jumps uh, but if you're a legend you can do it first try on all of these jumps so uh, as you might know getting good at those jumps is something you just got to do in this game whether you like it or not so i'm not gonna leave that off oh my i just realized my sound's not working bear with me okay sound should be fixed so basically you just want to jump up like this on the triangles no need for ladders no need for any of that stuff so uh, that's what I like about this method. Uh, I used to, you can do ladders if you really want. So it's one, two, three, let's just go four. So it's going to be a total of five. And that's usually good enough. If you're really worried about it, you can keep going up higher and do some theoretical testing about how high you need it to be. But I find four or five to generally be sufficient. When you jump up to this last one, you just place this, upgrade it, and then you want to place your windmill. Your windmill is not going to fit on one, so you do have to build off. Uh, you might need to do something like this just to get a, uh, a nice angle. Grab your wiring tool. Make sure you have it with you, actually, and ready. Oops, I just pressed the delete button. All right, uh, and just wire it to the power out. We're going to destroy these. Now, with a new update a couple months ago, uh, your wire stays tapped even when you switch. Uh, yeah, get on down here. Uh, you can make it clean along the sides if you want that's i don't know 
it doesn't matter to me too much personally it doesn't really affect anything either way and then you want to destroy the twig buildup now if you don't feel like messing with this twig buildup you can just have zero wood in your tc so that's generally how you would wire it up with a square it's basically the same except uh i usually do the jump up something like well, it'll be like this, right? I guess I'll show these jump ups because people don't seem to know how to do this. You want to go up the next one. You can basically do the same thing as the, the one I just did. You just got to get good at these jumps. I like to crouch. Um, I, this isn't necessarily the best way. It's just how I do it. I like to crouch and jump up. For some reason, that seems to work better for me. And then you can keep building up and doing the same thing. Or you can go triangle, half wall, on the outside, and jump up that way. It's a little bit easier. Um, and keep doing that as you go. When you're all done, remove them or remove all the wood from the TC. So with the square, it's essentially pretty easy to get up there too with no ladders. So no ladders needed that, and no nets. That's the big thing. I see people failing on that a lot. All right, so now that you got a battery, let's talk about a couple turret pods. There's, uh, I would say there's two main ones I use. I know there's the, the Lone in Tokyo one that's very advanced. Uh, I haven't really done that one in a wipe yet, so I'm not going to show it here. But keep in mind, there is a new Alone in Tokyo one with a little gap in, in metal that's OP. So look that up if you want. But I'm going to show you the ones that I tend to use. And you know what? I, I, I was going to pause and build them, but I think I'll just build them. So usually I do something like this. I you want to find, you can do it off of like an external near your wall facing in towards your compound. I like to get a triangle that's going to place it something like this. And then off this triangle, build another triangle in front of it and build wall frames not in this order necessarily um, and then do something like this break this put a half wall here half wall here that's just to protect it from mlrs and stuff and upgrade all this a little additional mlrs protection with the second uh, wall and it makes it a little harder to angle to shoot down on and okay so basically the theory here is you want it to shoot through two chain link fences Okay, that's that's the big thing here. Uh, let me grab a gun. And also, I guess I'll mention this now in the video. The only guns you want to use are the ones with high damage. This 55 damage on the Python, that's good. Because turrets get a reduced percentage in how hard they hit. And uh, that's why you want a high damage. Like if you put a Thompson or an MP5 in there, it just tickles people. You won't even get any kills hardly. So don't put that in there. You want something with this high damage. That's why pythons are meta. Rif assault rifle, okay, because it shoots really fast, but still not quite as good as the python, oddly enough. Uh, HMLMG, 58, a little better than a python, only a tiny bit better in theory. Uh, Bolties are also amazing. I would recommend python or bolty, or if you're rich, you can throw HMLMG in theirs. Um, of course, the L9 and M2 are amazing as well, but in general, pythons are really cheap, and they do really well, so pretty much just use pythons for the most part. And uh, be sure you wire it up before you do this. Pay close attention to the rest of this pod. It's very important. And I will talk about wiring here at the end of this. Wiring near the end, okay? Because I want to set up a few of these and show you several wiring up at once. All right, and then what you do is you put these here. So what this does is it doesn't allow people to shoot back. Like, I, they'll go like this. You know, people can range it and just kill it with their guns, basically. But now they can't. Like this thing, it still had a th it took zero damage from those python shots. Whereas with there's only one fence, it it's taken damage. So that's why you do two fences. And also this makes it so that whoever's raiding has to shoot an additional two HV rockets to kill your turret. Instead of three, it's now a five HV turret. And you can't eco it down uh, with anything really. So this, these are unecoable. The double cage, the double triangle, this is my standard meta. These are OP. If you can build a bunch like this, it's awesome. The downside is they're hard to get to. Sometimes you can corner them up if you got it close enough and get it from here to access it for authing people and whatnot and up updating ammo. But if you can't, just uh, leave this top open and you can jump in if you need to and just bring a ladder to climb back out. So you can still access it through one fence if you need to and do what you need to do, refill it off people, whatnot. Uh, if you're worried about the top being and people getting in there and doing something or throwing nades in or something, which they could do in theory, you can put a frame here and you can put a little vertical or a triangle hatch. All right, if you're worried about it, you can do that. 
and you still have access and now they can't throw nades in and stuff. Okay, so that's one of my favorite pods right there. Right, is my favorite. I'd say that's my number one pod right now that I like to spam if I'm spamming turrets. And I usually do these near my outer walls facing in towards the main. Uh, so a bunch of these kind of covering each other surrounding the main facing in. Absolutely OP. Um, there, I've revealed my turret secret, so <laughs> that's that's a big one I use. Another one I've been testing out, I don't know how good this is, honestly. It's one I call the, the Hooded Demon, and let's say, I'm going to make a, in theory, corner of base. Say you have a base, and this is like the outside honeycomb or whatever. Let's we'll make a corner here real quick. I don't know, it might look different, something like this. And this would take two triangles to fill. That's fine. So basically what you do here, you can do this off one triangle too. Uh, but, or you can do it off a square if you have a nice area that's a square. But basically you take what would be the second or third layer of honeycomb and you put one of these in it. You'll go uh, half wall, half wall, and then low wall, low wall, and then uh, roof piece. And then you break these two bottom ones. Upgrade these. Put your turret down here. I like to do uh, bolty turrets for these. Oops, I didn't mean to break that wall. Uh, let's redo it. Get that in there. And uh, yeah, I like to do silence bolties with ends in here personally. So I'll just hook up a bolty real quick. And throw it in there. Now, usually these are really low and deep in your compound and off your main. So what this means is people are generally going to have a hard time getting low on this thing to eco it. And if it's silenced, sometimes they won't even see it. They'll be jumping around your compound, you know, checking the radio or whatever, or trying to get your furnaces, and they'll just get shot by something. Okay, yep. So that's what I call the Hooded Demon. It also works with uh, squares. So if you're like... Maybe your honeycomb just happens to be square, for example. It works just as well. Maybe even better, actually, with squares, possibly. Um, that one. But yeah, these are really good when your compound's like kind of complicated and you got a bunch of stuff going on. Because they just they sneak shots in and it's it's pretty it's pretty epic. Um, let me get another bolt here for this one. You can do pythons here, of course, or whatever gun you feel is best, but uh, refer to what I said earlier about the damage. Keep that in mind. So, obviously these are a little easier to eco, but still, if you have it combined with these on the outside, people are really going to struggle against these. And if they're jumping around up high, they're going to sneak in shots up there. So I'm kind of still testing these two, these hooded demon ones. I don't, I don't know if they're super good. They're obviously not as good as the Alone in Tokyo Gap one. But they're very easy to do and quick, and they get the job done. And same with this one, very easy, quick. Those are the main three ways. Uh, another thing I like to do, I guess, you know, like, you usually have a gatehouse. A lot of people make these external gatehouses that are something like this. Um, let me just do this real quick. Like, if you have a disconnectable gatehouse, however you want to do this, it's whatever, it's fine. And you do something like this. Uh, break all these, break that. Like, you see this a lot, so I'll show you just another way I like to do turrets here. Um, you, want the, you want the square piece over here for the disconnect mechanism. You want a foundation here, uh, upgrade it. I like to put what I call throwaway turrets on these, just facing in. And if they get destroyed, who cares? Um, and usually you want these to be the first ones destroyed. And if you have more than 12 turrets, it'll start turning on the one, the numbers above 12 you have deeper in your compound. So I like to have these outer ones too, way out here, uh, on these type of externals. Seems to work pretty nice. Got to add a little more support here for this to work. Uh, yeah, there we go. And then we got... So I do like to surround with these two. I feel like this, I mean, it's very straightforward. It's just sitting on a block, nothing special really. But I like to do these ones as throw away, way outside. If someone's raiding, they're gonna break these soon. I also like to put alarms on these ones um, or alarms on those ones. And this disconnect will still works, of course. I'll just show you that real quick. Still works. So that's another pod I really like doing, I think is uh, 
not complicated at all, but it serves its purpose of being a throwaway turret. Um, if you don't have, if you're not rich and you just want every turret to be super strong, and you're capping at 12, do them like this probably, and maybe like that. But if you've got, if you're going to 16, you might want to surround with four like this. All right, so let's talk about alarming and power. I guess they're kind of related. So alarms, you want one of these smart alarms? These are actually really easy to hook up. It's like the easiest thing in the world to hook up. So somewhere deep in your base or hidden or whatever, you want these alarms. And you just take a wiring tool and you go pair with device so you can sync these to your phone and get an alarm. And you basically what you do is you take this power in on one of these and you wire it to a turret. And the turret has target. So if this turret gets a target, it will send you an alarm. Now keep in mind that these alarms take one power and these turrets take 10. So you do have to supply now 11 power to your turret for these to work. If you only supply 10, the alarm will not go off. Keep that in mind. And now it takes 11 power. So it does take power. Um, but it's it's really cool. It's, I like doing this with at least... You don't need to do it with every turret, I don't think. But you want at least some surrounding ones. Because you want to get an alert. Some people do this different ways. Maybe you have this thing hooked up to a, uh, a heartbeat sensor or something. Now, I know what a lot of comments are going to say at this point. Oh, yeah, you should heartbeat sensor your turrets. No, you should not. I mean, you can. But the thing is... People will just see the heartbeat sensor and avoid it unless you hide it. And a lot of times your turret will just never turn on because it'll never activate the heartbeat sensor. But I see all kinds of wacky things like people going, Okay, uh, now let's put a heartbeat sensor right here that turns on specifically that one. And it's like, no one's necessarily going to go that direction. They're just going to go over here, see an off turret, come up and spear it out. And your, your turret just won't work because you tried to heartbeat sensor it. But, I mean, there are trap metas and stuff that work. But in general, I would say just leave them all on and just go over cap with throwaway turrets that you want them to destroy to turn on more if you want to go over the 12 cap. That's what I tend to do. I mean, you might have other ideas, but that it is what it is. Okay, let's talk a little about powering. I'm going, to I'm going to show you the wrong way that everybody does. The meta, in my opinion, is wrong. It does work, though. But usually what you see is you see people grab... A bunch of these and they go like something like this I'll, I'll tell you why this is wrong they have the first one and you just keep chaining them uh, I guess I'll make this a little cleaner for sake of just go up the line here uh, keep running the right side power out to the next one and now you have four drops but the problem with this is well we're using eight power already and we're not even doing anything we're draining eight power and not doing anything okay so if it's got an alarm you need to wire 11 to it all right this one's got an alarm it needs 11 power now the alarm will actually function if it gets a target keep that in mind it's very important if you set this to 10 alarm won't go off so if you got an alarm you got to give it that additional power and yeah make sure you set these by just hitting your interact on them 10 you wire it to every turret you can you can see where this is going right pretty straightforward i'll still do it real quick here just now you see some people get really anal about like how these wires go and that's somewhat fine but what i would say is just try to keep just keep it uh just kind of out of the way if you can but if you can't if you got to get the max distance and there's no way it's stretching unless you like right click to undo unless you go well not gonna work so how do you get an extension well you can extend there's two different ways Let me break this link if you need an extension, keep in mind it's a point of failure. You can do it with a counter, or you can do it with a splitter. All of these essentially work the same for doing an extension. Um, I personally usually just do a splitter because it's easy, but all of these will allow a nice pass through and only use one power. It takes one power to extend on, but hey, if you need to make it to that turret, uh, you got to do what you got to do. If you use a counter, be sure to set the pass through. Set it to pass through mode. Wire it in. here but now keep in mind since we have an extension this one needs to be an 11 and if it also had an alarm hooked up to it too it would need to be 12 so always keep track of that and now you can see that 11 power is going to it this should be using one i think yeah so that's only getting 10 so that's one way of extending it now that one's kind of obvious uh if you want it a little more subtle where it doesn't have a digital number you can just do this essentially the same thing uh wire it to the top only wire one output so 
And if you you don't have to rerun the tap, do the electrical update from a while ago, you just right click on that and then take it to the new one. And boom. Also done. Powering back up. Same deal. The disadvantage of this one, I would say, is that your teammates might see this and be like, oh, I got some power here. Let me uh, wire up a couple lights or whatever. And they do that and then your turret goes off. So if you got teammates that are also messing with your wiring, I wouldn't do this one for that reason. And maybe stick with the counter or just let them know so that they don't mess with your stuff. The combiner, um, let's just do it real quick. Actually, so you can, if you want to swap these out, you can, you don't even have to go to both ends. You can just right click on this one, set it here, right click on this one, set it here. And no, actually you can't do this one. The, uh, electrical branches, branches do not allow going into root combiners. So can't do that one after all. So these are your two options for extensions, basically. And uh, they're the, they're the best two. All right, let's, uh. Let's wire this back up real quick because I want to show you just just another thing here Okay, jumping in here real quick. I just want to show you guys another thing. Okay, so with the extension I didn't really show it in the video, but there's a way there's some ways to kind of hide these because this is a point of failure That's pretty easy to destroy. So One of two things I like to do. I like to either have the turret. It's powering covering it so they can't even get to it um, and I'll say destroy the turret or enough door doors to be worth a turret or something like that but also another thing you can do and it's not really shown well here but i think i can manage to show it uh but basically if you're building your foundation up a little higher and you can get a low one somewhere like a triangle or something you can hide it down in a hatch and this also works great for a place to hide alarms so sometimes i'll do this with if i have to make an extension i'll build just a little housing thing like this um, and then, and then put every, put all the wiring components down in there. So that way it's just another thing they have to destroy. And maybe, maybe you also have it like this too. And it's already decently hidden, you know, behind a garage door or a double door or something. So you can bury these extensions pretty well and make them not really worth getting to and make it so that it's still the Raider would, if they realized there was an extension here, they would still be like, well, it's probably cheaper to hit the turret still, so, you know. So that's just another thing you can do that I forgot to record, so I'm just popping in here and adding that. It's kind of nice to hide electrical and things like that if you have to do extensions. Oh, uh, another thing, I guess is another hot tip I can throw in here real quick while I'm at it. If you need to reload these, put more ammo or off people, and you, you got to power it off, if you don't have a switch, which I should have a switch and I don't. You can just untap the power with right click and it'll be ready to retap when you're all done. So you can do all the auth stuff, fill it with ammo. I'm gonna de-auth here. De-auth and power it up. So I wanna show you something. Basically, I wanna show you that it does shoot. Like, you, can, you can see the bullets hitting me. And I have blood off, so it's making white splashes. But yeah, so that's that's the thing. I didn't really mention it earlier, but the turret can shoot through two chain link while players cannot. Okay, so what is the problem with this? I said that this was what I would call the wrong way to do it. Now, this does get it done, and if you just need it done, and you got plenty of power, and you don't care, uh, this is, it works. You get your turrets up, it can make the difference between uh, being offline or not, and winning a raid or not so if this is how you get it done fine so be it i'm not gonna I'm not gonna yell at you but the problem is say uh okay this look at this is using 42 power for all these turrets right so what if someone destroys this one boom okay my battery's still using 42 power but it's that turret's completely gone and yet it's still pulling power what what that stinks it's like it's terrible efficiency. I don't, I'm, I'm kind of an IT guy and, and a programmer, so I, I always look at stuff like this. Like, I don't like inefficiencies, and this is inefficient because if something fails, it still max draws, which can make a difference, especially if you got a bunch of stuff hooked up or backup ones hooked up and you, your power's near in the edge or they're destroying your solar panels and windmills, for example, and you need your battery to hold out as long as possible. This can make a difference. Well, the thing is with uh these electrical branches the left side is a is a fixed draw whatever you set it to it draws that amount even if it's going to nothing which from an electrical standpoint makes no sense uh you're basically just blowing 
power into thin air, which would create like some kind of electrical storm or something. I don't know. Uh, it just, it, it kind of boggles my mind. But yeah, the point is it just always, this is always using 10 power. Plus, I had another one for it. So you just got all this extra draw. So the better way to do it is, this kind of varies a little bit. So this thing puts out 100 watts, right? If you do a bunch of those uh, electrical branches, you can probably only wire like six, seven turrets max. But these batteries can support, in theory, up to 10. But you're gonna need a little bit of extra power usage for your electrical parts. So they should be able to support nine turrets, and they can. And they can do it dynamically very nice, like, like so. Use a splitter, and we're gonna do kind of a tree method. So you need a starting splitter, and then you need the three that are the main power taps. The starting one, you go right here, and you wire each of these to one of these. Now we have nine taps that will each support a turret, and these are dynamic draw. So like right now, you'll see that this battery is using four power, just one for each of these. And we'll just, you just hook them each to a turret. There could potentially be a little problem where these only output, well, it's 32, that's plenty. You gotta, you gotta be aware that they still need the 11 if you got a smart alarm and not 10. You basically just wire it like this. Um, let's see if we can get to all these. Bear with me a sec. Let's do it super quick here. And I think this will put out 11 power. It's close. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Let's get a pass through here on this one. I'm using this counter because I want to see the number. Yeah, this one's not quite good enough. So these, the downside here is if you're splitting into three, you're only going to get 10 power. Now you can buff this up just a tiny bit by doing something like this. Like I was saying, you might want to uh, facilitate with a small battery or so to get it to the next number up. And this is simple. You probably have this stuff laying around in a box late in the white that's not even being used. Just drop a solar panel. Almost doesn't matter where. Just face north, drop it somewhere out of the way. It can be on the ground, it may be on top of your base. No one cares. People get real too anal about their electrical and then they just do it wrong anyway you know it's just like if you wire it up right and it's messy that's better than doing it wrong and it's nice in my opinion so now you can do a combined power out here and we're getting a total of 115 so now with just that support added into a combiner we have enough to support the extensions and the alarms so a little overdraw but it's not it's not a bad deal well it's not overdrawn this is gonna draw what it needs basically but that's how you can get over that 100 power is you combine them together like so but okay i guess the problem here is this battery is always at max capacity it's using 15 always so it's gonna drain you're probably gonna need two or three solar panels on it for that reason so yeah just keep that in mind it's, it gets a little and then you need to i don't know I'm going to do this a little messy, but rather than directly in here, we go here, go here, wire this to the other, well, wire this to the combined out there, wire this, now we got room to hook up more solar panels to keep that battery operational. Boom. Now it's charging a lot better and it shouldn't drain even at max usage. So you might need to do something like that if you want to support nine turrets otherwise you might only be able to get eight because you might only be able to put two on these Does that make sense okay so that's that's just an option there but you can combine these outs to up the max for this type of thing but this is still more efficient than using like eight or nine of these branches uh it, for sure because look this is draining 37 right it's powering three turrets plus some electrical stuff uh plus a little extra draw for the root so it's like one two three four five uh, six with that come that extension so we got the six from that right and then three turrets so I don't know where the extra one is getting pulled but it's using one more for something else too maybe it's something to do with this combiner I'm not sure okay but here's the cool thing now with these not only do you have nine nice taps that just all work for turrets which is sweet if one of your turrets gets destroyed maybe you're getting pummeled and your power sources are going down one of your turrets goes down you don't want to be max drawing your battery if your stuff's getting pummeled. 
You want them to hold out as long as possible. Look at this, active usage, usage 26. If a turret gets destroyed, the active usage actually goes down, which does not happen with these electrical branches, and that's a huge downside in my opinion. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna tell you about wiring. Use these for dynamic draw, basically, and to get those nice nine taps, supplement with a small battery and a few solar panels if you need to go over that 10 per tap, uh, but just slightly. Like that one battery is enough to do it. I'll show you one more turret pod I like to do. I call this, uh, it's basically one of these. You can have an isolated turret pod all on its own uh, somewhere. Maybe you have an external. Let's just, I'll just build a quick one as an example. Uh, something like this, maybe. You'll see this in a lot of my videos. I do, I do this a lot. Uh, TC, full covered. Bear with me a second here. Yeah, I, I do these frequently. So if your external is really far away and you're so far from your battery, you don't want to run extensions. Uh, and if you want it to be on a separate power source for other reasons too, like if you're getting raided, you don't want um, you don't want everything to go down when one battery gets destroyed. You can have these external ones on their own power. And here's here's how you do it. You get in here, place a TC. Okay, it's a little awkward. Corner TC, whatever. All you need is a small battery a combiner and two solar panels i usually put them on top of the pod but you could place place them low if you want basically just make sure they're facing north combine these in run this to the end and boom these put up to 15 power out this will not die as long as your solar panels are working half decent i put these in a terrible spot i don't really think about it because I need to build the, uh, usually I end up putting these on top of the thing, but if you have barricade, you might not be able to do that. So, uh, just wherever, you know, wherever's good where they work is fine. The key thing to do here is this game is really time consuming. All right, let's just admit that you want to do this quickly. You don't want to spend like four days analyzing where to put your solar panel just so it looks a tiny bit nicer. Now that's my opinion, of course, but come on. This game is already so dang time consuming. Just get it done, man. That's that's my theory with this kind of stuff. I don't mess around. I just get it done so I can actually go play the game and run monuments and stuff. I don't want to be sitting here pixel moving tiny little solar panels. Okay, maybe you have a different opinion. But now this is super cool because uh, it's still the epic, epic pod that's hard to deal with. And it's on its own power system. So it's yet another power system they have to knock out to raid you. And you got this nice isolated pod on its own. So th this is huge. These are awesome. Now when I do this, I usually have something like this going on too. Um, uh, the pods vary. I'm just making a quick sample. Your terrain might make it different for you or whatever. Um, I usually do a garage door window. And I usually upgrade this back wall to metal. Just so they can't easily eco these out. Or something but that's up to you uh, window we need of course a window so basically the point is you don't want them they don't want it to be cheap to get to this small battery and if they really want to destroy the panels whatever it is what it is they're kind of expensive to destroy too most people don't mess with them uh, uh, we need a door garage door so this is what I usually end up doing for these just that Pack the TC of course, uh, did I upgrade the top? I didn't. Oh, I would upgrade the ceiling too, of course. And then you got, yeah, you got this isolated pod that's hard to deal with. Yet another layer of security. This, These are awesome. Even if you just do these, just small battery, two solar panel, uh, all around your base on their own isolated system, your base is going to be like unraidable. Well, not unraidable, of course, but really expensive to raid and most people will just nope out of the situation go raid someone else if they're raiding so this this is a super strong thing too i'm telling you i'm having mixed feelings about this i'm i'm like revealing all my secrets here and i'm gonna if people actually if this picks up and people watch this bases are going to get a lot harder to raid <laughs> it's true it's this is uh that's why I didn't want to share this, because I want to raid people and not be... I don't want them to have all this advanced knowledge, because it kind of works against me if I share it, you know what I mean? But I'm doing it for you guys, so I hope you appreciate it. hope you find this stuff useful. That's pretty much everything. I can't think of anything else. I think I've showed you all my systems. I know my thing was, you know, it's a bit chaotic here or whatever, but the reality is, this is how you do it. You get it done quickly. You don't, you don't mess around forever. 
All right. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Happy turreting. Let me know if you got any questions down below. Matt out. Peace.